This is a brief introduction to our lecture on schizophrenia. It is one of the major diseases we will cover in this course, and it's important for you to thoroughly understand both the disease and nursing interventions. As you can see from this slide, the cerebrum and the cerebellum are affected in this disease. All of the areas that have colored spots are impacted. What does this mean for your nursing interventions with these clients? It will require a multi-intervention interdisciplinary approach to care. As we go over the content in this video, I want you to consider for a moment what's it like to have a chronic illness that has a heavy stigmatization. From a developmental level, if you are in your teens, what are the challenges according to Erickson's developmental stages? How might this impact your future growth and development? A little bit about schizophrenia. It's a chronic disease, but what does that mean? That means the symptoms are managed, but the disease never goes away. It's marked by a slow onset. This can make it more difficult to diagnose. The disease has episodic changes. This means that interspersed between periods of wellness, there are psychotic thoughts, hallucinations, and disorganized behavior. Remember, the onset's slow. It's very easy for these clients to simply be characterized as odd or quirky, thereby delaying diagnoses and treatment. It is important to complete a thorough assessment, assessment, and this begins with a good history. Because this disease progress waxes and wanes, it is important to find out where the client is at the moment so that baseline measures can be established. A bit of the demographics on this illness gives us some perspective of how it impacts public health. Schizophrenia is the seventh leading cause of disability. It affects women and men equally. The typical onset occurs in the late teens or early 20s. It is usually an acute psychotic episode that causes the client to seek treatment. This disease affects more than 2 million Americans each year. Only the most ill of individuals are cared for in the inpatient setting. That means that those affected are in our communities. We see them at church, in the grocery store, and at school. Unfortunately, for those who do not seek treatment, these individuals are also found on the street due to homelessness and in jails due to crimes that are committed when the disease is left untreated. This shows you the terms that are used to differentiate different types of schizophrenia and the behaviors that are associated with the disease. If you are not familiar with these terms, they can be found in your text. Stereotyping and stigmatization are predominant. It is very important that you get in touch with your personal belief system before caring for these clients. Remember that we're caring for an individual with a disease process, not a disease. Although schizophrenia will cause life-altering changes, it does not mark the end of health and wellness. Recovery and remission are possible. It is part of our role as healthcare professionals to avoid stereotyping that can lead to shame for the client and ultimately to poor health outcomes. The symptoms of schizophrenia are characterized by positive and negative symptoms. This does not mean positive as in good symptoms and bad symptoms. Rather, think of them as symptoms which cause a heightening of emotions, sensations, and thoughts, and those that cause a decrease. The positive symptoms of schizophrenia are hallucinations which can be auditory or visual. They can occur at any time. Delusions, which are personal beliefs that aren't based in reality. Disorganized thoughts come in all shapes and sizes and can range from magical thinking to impairment and judgment and insight, and this leads to bizarre behavior. When we talk about negative symptoms, we should remember a lack of something. Remember going back to a medical terminology that A indicates without. So agloria is a poverty or lack of speech. Affective flattening is marked by little or no demonstration of emotion. A sociality is not wanting to maintain any type of a relationship, even with friends or family. Evolution is little drive or motivation to attend to activities, and this can even include activities of daily living. Lastly, anhedonia is an inability to experience pleasure. Cognitive impairment comes with higher level processing of the brain. Clients can demonstrate bizarre patterns of speech, use of words, strange behavior, and an inability to understand communication that's directed at them. 
We will discuss this at length in our lecture, but nursing intervention should be directed at helping the client during periods especially of acute psychosis. Remember, client safety is always to be considered first. This demonstrates how at any given point in time the client can be experiencing positive, negative, and cognitive symptoms. It can make the care of these clients especially challenging. Although I stated it before, it's really important to uh, remember that each client will have unique symptoms as their perception is their reality. By avoiding stereotyping, we don't place artificial barriers for the client as they work towards maximization of their health. Lastly, assessment is crucial both to determine the client's current uh, status and to develop a baseline for functioning. Goals for the client should be individualized. Be sure to include the client's environment in this process. Look at the home setting, support systems, and potential causes of stress. The family is an integral part of this process and can provide a wealth of information. The goal is wellness and maximization of health. It can be challenging as many of the interventions for this disease have negative consequences such as medications that cause weight gain leading to the potential for other health issues such as metabolic syndrome or diabetes. When considering wellness, all aspects of the client should be thought of. It's important in goal setting to reach towards realistic goals that the client would like to achieve, not what we think is in the best interest of the client. Medication management is a large component of treatment for these patients with schizophrenia. Side effects can make medication management and compliance a challenge. The top priority is always to achieve the greatest movement towards health promotion and maintenance. This is best accomplished by focusing on wellness, not the disease. It is readily apparent in clients that have been hospitalized a number of times that it's difficult to maintain hope towards wellness when you have an orientation towards being, continuously being a patient with no power over your health. I'm going to show you this short YouTube video. We won't watch the whole thing, but just to give you a little insight into the world of auditory hallucinations. As you watch this, consider what it would be like to have this type of distraction 24 hours a day. Think about listening to this even while you're sleeping. You are so stupid. Look at you, you know you can't stupid, stupid. Boy, you know that part of me. Jump in the woods. Jump now. Jump in front of the woods. You can't stop. Stupid. Good. Look at you. Stupid. Stupid. Pointless. Touch you. Worthless. You touch that one. Stupid. Yes, you were. You touched them. So and then, stupid. Oh, look, look at you. you. I can see stupid. you sweating. Stupid. Stupid. I can see you. Pointless. Worthless. Worth she, she knows. She knows. Yes, the great great coffee future is a professional design future concept for a professional living and function ready to be independent and wealth generation for entertainment. I have no function for communication. I had you listen to that for a little over a minute. Can you imagine what it's like listening to it 24 hours a day? So the question becomes, how do we focus on wellness? Well, we do it by being honest, having open communication with the client and the family, completing a thorough assessment to determine the client's current health status and their understanding of health, focusing on identifying their strengths that can be used to move towards a new definition of health. Education should be directed at uh, what is the disease, medication management, and recovery. In this process, we should always discuss the potential for relapse and how and when to seek healthcare support. The education we provide to our clients will allow them to have more power over their health and ultimately lead to better health outcomes.